Welcome to Bar Chart's weekly series of webinars designed to help you, the investor trader, better understand a variety of trading ideas and concepts, as well as the pages and tools Bar Chart provides to help you make a more informed investment decision. Today's subject, making sense of these skyrocketing commodity prices. You know, as we emerge from our COVID caves, it's not hard to notice that prices of goods and services have increased substantially. You know, at the grocery store, you look at things like coffee, eggs, and bacon, they're up about 30%. Prices at the gas pump, the national average, has gone from just under $2 a gallon to over three gallons, $3 a gallon, a 50% increase in a year's time. And I don't know if any of you have seen uh, the sticker shock of new home prices, but the National Home Builders Association estimates that the cost of lumber has added $36,000 to the average 2,500 square foot new home. Now, some folks like Chairman Powell of the Fed will tell us that these increases in our commodities is transient or temporary and are a function uh, of supply chain bottlenecks and some unforeseen greater demands as we come out of these COVID restrictions. Hi, I'm John Rowland, and I've been trading commodities for over 30 years. And although uh, some of our current market movements are unprecedented in terms of historical values and volatility, it's nothing I haven't seen before in my career. And Listen, I don't claim to have a crystal ball, but I do have experience. And experience tells me that all I need is a futures market and their pricing. Because inside the pricing futures markets is all the information that I need to discover if these prices are going to continue or retrace. So today, let's see if we can make sense of the skyrocketing prices. But more importantly, what I want to do is teach you how to recognize trading opportunities uh, as commodity prices rise and fall. Well, with me today is my partner and our moderator, Gene Baker. Hello, Gene. Good afternoon, John. How are you? I'm doing fine. And yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you. Cool. So, Gene, have you noticed spikes in prices for things like groceries? It's funny you say say that. Yeah, I usually pay with Apple Pay when I go through the grocery line and don't really realize, don't look at the receipt until I check my phone later on and see what was uh, deducted. And it's like, wow, I, I bought one bag of groceries and it cost me that. So, yeah, I've I've noticed it. Definitely yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. It really is amazing. I can't wait for farmers markets to start reopening so I don't have to pay three dollars for a cucumber, you know. <laughs> well, you might be paying four. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get let's get started. Okay. Um, just to remind you folks that, you know, all trading has a inherent risk to it and futures trading for sure. And that it's important for you to understand uh, that risk element before you uh, take on any kind of trading program. And that you make sure that you are suited for um, those conditions or you can bear that financial risk. And we at Bar Chart always recommend that you uh, seek the advice of a qualified financial um, professional. And again, I'm going to show you some things today that have happened in the past, and there's no guarantee that the things that I show you will happen in the future. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Here's our bar chart page. We're going to go to our futures page, and let's go under performance leaders to start off with. And I'm not going to look at today's performances. I'm going to look at the last 52 weeks. And it's real easy to see here um, as I scroll. Whoops. As I scroll down through my different uh, 
commodities here that look at all the commodity markets are all uh, in the green. And only a couple, I think there's only about three, that are actually down over the last 52 weeks, cheese, butter, and uh, orange juice. So there's something we don't have to worry about, Gene, <laughs> as far as prices. Um, but uh, look at uh, all of these commodities, things that we all use on a day-to-day -day basis. They're all up. Some of them are up dramatically. Now, let's go back to longer-term trends. And again, the one that jumps out right at top is our lumber. And you can see that uh, lumber here is on a weighted alpha basis this is up almost 300%. It was actually above 300 the last couple of days. It's it's pulled back. And just to remind you guys what our weighted alpha is, it's a measurement of how much price has moved in a one year period where we put more emphasis on the most recent price action. So you can see that you know lumber has uh, really almost tripled in just one year's time. All right, so let's look at these different commodities through the lens of a chart. And here, you know, what we can see is that maybe Chairman Powell is right that um, on this particular market, right, look at prices have now retraced. If we think about economics, remember back in high school where we had that chart with the line of supply and the line of demand and they made an X and it intersected and where that X intersected was the price of that certain commodity. I, I kind of remember the commodity that we always traded back then was widgets, right? What is a widget anyways? And if you shifted the supply or demand arrow left or right, it would change the price, right? So true supply is being those who produce or create our commodities, our makers. And demand uh, is those who consume or process our commodities and turn them into finished goods, our takers, right? So lumber is not excluded from the laws of supply and demand, right? During COVID, many mills shut down or cut back production due to lockdown restrictions, limiting supply. And at the same time, when other commodities felt a fall in demand, case in point, jet fuel or other petroleum products, lumber demand actually increased as home builders try to keep up with the demand for homes in an already low new home inventory environment. But the unforeseen demand, as Chairman Powell mentioned, came from our do-it-yourselfers, right? Those who were stuck at home and decided to start remodeling projects like new bathrooms or additions or man caves, which led to lumber prices making rising to historic levels, right? So here's a 20 year chart and you can really see how lumber prices, and this is very dramatic here. Not only uh, did we see lumber prices triple during the last year, but on a historical basis, 20 years, but even if I go even farther out to the maximum that we can look at, you're talking about prices that we have never seen uh, before, all right? So as we move our discussion forward today, I want you guys to pay a particular attention to the price action of other commodities uh, during the end of 2008 and to the spring of 2011. And what we're going to look at is what is a common theme that took place during this time frame? And is there a correlation that we can look for, for that re repeats today? All right. So. I'm just going to go down the line here and look at a few in particular. Here is soybean oil, and you can see that big rise in price from uh, 2000 and end of 2008 to the spring of 2011, right? Um, here's corn, same thing. Uh, here's uh, copper, again, big price movement. Uh, Crude oil, again, same time frame, same price result. Uh, sugar, 
Now, sugar had uh, a little bit of retreat at, during that two and a half year period, but it still peaked out in 2011. Uh, cotton, another commodity, right? And, um, you know, one that everybody likes to look at is gold. Again, gold uh, rising uh, during that same period of time. So what's the common thread here? Well, I think you guys can probably guess what it is. The dollar. The dollar. As the dollar fell during that time period, right, due to that monetary easing that we had from the credit crisis of 2008, commodity prices across the board rose. And we're seeing that again today. If we look at what has the dollar done since this time last year, uh, you can see that the dollar has fallen in value of about 14% as our commodities of all have risen during that period of time. All right. So let's go back to crude oil and we'll start there. Okay. And again, I just wanted to show you that comparison of what has gone on this time around. So one of the things we can do is I can right click on my flip charts, comparison chart, and I can put in a symbol of another commodity or some other element that I want to do an analysis. And I'm going to pick what is called the dollar index. Let's change this color to make it nice and dark so you guys can see it. And I'll apply that. And again, there you can see, here we can see as price of the dollar falls, so did the price of crude oil rally. Let's look at corn just quickly. Same kind of same story. Um, copper, same kind of story, okay? So let me get rid of that. Let me get rid of that clean up my chart a little bit for you guys, all right? So the rise and fall of dollar over longer periods of time has an inverse effect on our commodity prices. But John, <laughs> you said that the answer to supply and demand is inside the prices of our commodities. And, and so it is. And so this is what I want to show you guys. Okay, so what I've done here is I've gone to uh, WTI July uh, crude oil, and here's my little menu. I just want to show you this because I've gotten this um, question a couple of times in my last recent webinars. Is you know when I go to any specific asset or security, there will be a menu over here on this side, and this is probably a lot of you guys have recognized. And futures markets is no different; just the, just the pages are could be different. And what I like to do is I like to collapse this menu uh, because it just makes my chart bigger. It's a lot easier for me to see things and for presentation value for you guys a lot. A lot. But notice all the different things that are in here. And the one that I'm gonna want to spend a lot of time in is called future spread. So I'm just gonna collapse that. And all those elements that were in the menu that I just collapsed are found inside of this little window here. And there it is, futures. Uh, spreads. Okay, so this is one of the pages that is not readily, uh, I would say, used a lot by of uh, our traders, and a lot of traders are maybe not aware of futures markets and this concept of futures spread trading. So a futures spread basically is the price relationship between two different commodities. Now it could be an intra-month spread or between two different months. It could be uh, a collection of uh, some months, uh, which is sometimes referred to as a strip, or you could have spreads that are between inter-commodities. Uh, In other words, uh, you know, from one commodity to another. So what type of spread? Well, an SA is a strip, SP, a uh, standard spread, that's what we're going to look at today. B, F, butterflies, and X, S would be those inter-commodity spreads. And then you can just go into hope here 
and scroll down and they give you the definitions of those uh, different types of spreads. So we're going to look at SPs or standard spreads. So what we see here is July 1st, this is the uh, 2021 July contract as it relates to the uh, 2021 August contracts and that difference, that difference between those two contracts is 25 cents. And you can see that just throughout the day that, you know, it had a high of 28 cents and a low of 23 cents. So we're going to look at spreads. Now, what I want to do is I also want to go and show you a spread that I have uh, saved for you guys for this demonstration. And I'm just where I, where I put it for uh, our discussion is in my tools under something that's called my my charts. And what I'm looking at here is uh, I'm in my charts, and my charts is very similar to, let's say, a watch list or a portfolio. It's just a, a place where I can store charts that I've manipulated or put notes in, or uh, you know, I just want to archive or uh, keep that information. And for me, I use them for presentation value. There's a lot of different charts, or uh, I can I can um, uh, categorize them by different concepts. Um, and so the one that we're looking at today is our crude oil futures standard spread, right, SP. And what we're looking at is the June 21st contract versus the December 21st contract. And that's what we're looking at right now. Okay, so I want to introduce to you two new terms or concepts, um, backwardation and contango. These are two words that you don't often hear when you talk about futures traders, but more advanced or experienced futures traders are well aware of these two concepts. And if you go and try to Google these two words, you would probably get spell checked. Google will probably try to spell check you on it. But the terms do describe a certain type of condition in our commodity markets. All right, so let's start with contango. So the term contango means that the front month contract trades at a discount to the forward contracts, all right? Now, in a contango environment, a contango market, now this is a generalization, you will typically see this when we look at that supply and demand picture, that supply is outpacing demand, rising inventories maybe would be a good example, or demand has uh, fallen. So contango is telling us that the market is out of balance, and not only is it out of balance, but the balance is shifting towards greater supply and lesser demand. The other term is backwardation, and backwardation is just the opposite. In a backward-dated market, the front month contract trades at a premium to the forward contracts. And again, in a generalization, typically backward-dated markets are markets that are in uptrends or that are the demand is outpacing the supply or the supply is limited. All right. So when we look at our futures markets, our markets are all either in contango or backwardation. Now we're going to look at a caveat. There are some markets that are inherently contango, but we can still learn some things from them. So again, here we are in crude oil. So prior to COVID, right, we can see that the June contract was trading at a premium to the December, but it was continuing to get closer to what we call parity or zero. You can see it there. And that was because if prior to COVID, crude oil was going through an oversupply. There was a glut of crude oil on the global stage, global markets, and that was putting pressure on crude oil. If you kind of remember prior to COVID, you know, prices were coming down. But then COVID came and then we had instant lockdowns and what happened? Demand for uh, petroleum products literally disappeared overnight. And you can see that the June price fell dramatically in a relationship to the December point price to a point where it was actually about almost $2 or greater than $2 discounted 
to the June, the December contract. Now, over the summer, you know, uh, Saudi Arabia and Russia, and uh, they started cutting back production here in the United States. A lot of uh, domestic producers shut in production. So we started to get this rebalancing between supply and demand, but we still were in a contango market. In other words, discounting forward contract, excuse me, discounting current contracts versus forward contracts. So what I want to do now is I want to show you four inflection points in this chart. And I want you to remember the dates, okay, as we go through here. And then we're going to extrapolate this into our price chart of crude oil. Okay, so the first date I want to look at is where did my contango stop going down and start this trend of moving from contango uh, to backwardation? Well, that happened around November 2nd. Now, if you remember November 2nd, that was when we got the first vaccination. All right, when um, did our market move from contango discount to backwardation premium? Well, you can see there that that happened around November 24th. And then, we were in a premium or a backward dated market and you can see we found some kind of equilibrium for a period and then where did our trend take off again and really accelerate january 5th and then where did price top out well our backwardation got as high as almost four dollars and fifty cents and that happened around march 8th Okay, so let's go back to our chart. And I need to go back a couple pages here. Just be patient with me here. I'm going to go back to my July and I'm going to go back to my interactive chart. And let's look back one year. Okay. All right. Remember those dates November 2nd, the 24th, January 5th, and March 8th. All right. Here we can see our crude oil, our July crude oil was in slight uh, a slight downtrend, right? Remember, we were in contango there. And where did that downtrend stop? November 2nd. Okay. Where did price action go from being a downtrend to being an uptrend? Well, when we broke out of this range and made a new high right here, right? And that was when we went from contango to um, backwardation. Where did price pause and then shoot back up to create a trend where price has, has not even returned to January 5th. That's when our backwardation started really wide. And where did crude oil prices recently top out? March 8th. So here we see is that this backwardation contango environment inside of our futures markets is actually helping us predict strengthening trends, changes in trends, or in this case, a really nice dominant trend that has been going on for you know almost uh, six months or so now, six or seven months, all right? But hindsight's 2020, right? Uh, how can I use this to incorporate into my analysis when I'm trading? Okay. So I'm going to go into uh, another section of our futures page. And this is called our futures trading guide. And under our futures trading guide, this is a hypothetical trading system where we look at 
the nine day moving average versus the 18 day moving average. And we're, what we're looking for is when they cross over. And the, when they cross, these will generate a buy or sell signal depending on if they cross up or cross down. And I've done uh, webinars before in the past about the futures trading guide. And I would recommend if you're interested about it, go go and watch them. I think there's two of them that are, that are out there. So let's go to crude oil. And I'm gonna go and look at the details of crude oil and here i am in that july contract still and here we have a buy signal now notice actually let's go back let's squeeze this up a little bit here yeah this is good yeah so we have a buy signal here that happened on november 12th now a lot of times the futures trading guide is not on top of exactly the same days when we see these inflections in our contango and backwardations because we're talking about moving average it might take a couple days there might be a little bit of lag time but again november 12th was right after that november 2nd where our contango stopped going down and started going up but let me make this chart a little bit bigger so you can see it All right where did our price break out right remember that where we went from contango to backwardation well there's that big price movement there it is on november 4th 24th so if you were trading crude oil and you had saw that you thought that your new uptrend was being created at this time and then you went and looked at the fact that we had moved from contango to backwardation that would have only confirmed to you that that trend is now in control right and our futures trading guide had already given you a buy signal so that would have enhanced or given you confidence that hey hey these two things are now lining up and it tells me that i can look to take a long trade all right now let me kind of make this a little bit bigger for you what I do see here is here we have a range of price again, where the market kind of went sideways and that on this particular day right here, price opened up below our moving average, but before the day was over, it not only broke out of this range, it closed above. And this is a classic outside trading day. This is a super bullish signal in terms of trend analysis. And that was our January um, 5th date, right? So again, another opportunity uh, to get into uh, crude oil. All right, now let's look at current price or what's going on uh, today, right? So again, here's our spike in price around March 8th. And then, then what I said that there is a delay effect with the futures trading guide because of these moving averages. So it really gave you a sell signal to get out of this long uh, about March 23rd. But let's go back to our backward dated chart in a second here. Where did our momentum, right? That's this purple line represents the nine day moving average. Where did our nine day moving average change its momentum? Well, it happened on this day, March 18th. And if I go back to my contango, backwardated chart right there's our march 8th right where did this trend of backwardation stop where did the we make a new low right it looks like right right around here around three dollars backwardation but notice the date march 18th so if you were a very sophisticated and experienced futures trader this would have been a red flag for you and yes the trading guide would have signaled a sell on the 24th you probably would have done some kind of mechanics or uh, rules of risk that you would either have stopped yourself out or uh, you'd be very aware of another price movement to the downside okay now what has price done in the short term well we can see that we have uh, still uh, an uptrend remember we are still in backwardation right which is a sign of a uptrend but our backwardation is kind of getting smaller and we're kind of range bound and certainly uh, we can see that crude oil again is kind of range bound but it is still trending higher 
right? What would be that reason, right? Our backwardation has gotten lower, right? That could be a weakening of our trend. And certainly this trend doesn't look very strong right here, but what would be the wild card? Well, of course, our friend, the dollar index. And you can see that during this sideways slight upward action, our dollar has fallen. So we've got two cross currents here. We have a backwardation that is narrowing, but it's still pretty positive. And now we can see that the dollar has fallen, which has been very supportive to crude oil prices. But on the big picture, you know, we are up against what I would consider some longer term supply and that maybe we need to pause here for a bit or have a bit of a pullback. Now, our futures trading guide has issued a sell signal. Now, personally, I don't think I would feel comfortable taking a short in crude oil when I'm in a backwardation and a falling dollar environment, okay? But I could be waiting for my backwardation to widen or for wait for my sell signal to turn to a buy signal. So I think we're kind of in flux here with crude oil. All right. Let's go to grains. I see a lot of questions. I'm I'm will get to them at the end of our session. I just want to give you guys a warning that uh, this session today will go a full hour, so we'll probably answer questions at the top of the hour. So just hang in there. I will try to get as many questions as I can. All right, so let's go to grains. And I'm looking at corn in particular here. And you can see the July contract is uh, 625 and 4.8. And the December contract is 520. So what are we in? We're in backwardation, right? There's a premium to the front of the board, all right? Okay. So let's go to our charts. And let's look at a little bit wider time frame, right? And again, I picked some inflection points for you guys. Uh, August 13th, uh, uh, December 18th, and March 31st. And again, where did our downtrend stop going down? Where did we start seeing prices go up? Where did prices pause? And then where did we see an acceleration of our trend? Where did prices pause? And where did we see an acceleration of our trend? So uh, around early August, uh, middle of December, and at the end of March. All right. So here is our common spread, uh, this one happens to be the July corn contract versus the December 21 contract, July. And again, just what these red and green arrows are. Remember, this is a backwardation contango chart. This is not a price chart of corn, but let's look at our comparison with our old friend, the old dollar. make that nice and dark so you guys can see it, right? I mean, what we're seeing here in corn is both backwardation and the effect of the dollar, okay? All right, so let's look at our price action, right? Where did corn's contango stop? Well, it looks like around the beginning of August, but where did that uptrend start to take off? Well, August 14th, right in the middle of August, where we said that we saw that price action in the corn market. Where did we um, go from contango to backwardation? Well, right around the end of September, okay? 
And where did we get this last leg, this big acceleration of price in corn market? Well, right around the beginning of April. Remember, we saw that on our chart around March 31st. So here we see a little bit of a lag effect, but again, a confirmation of the trends that we were um, uh, seeing. All right, so let's go to our futures traders guide. All right, let's see if we can make some more uh, correlations. All right, where did we get this first big buy signal? Well, there it is, August 17th, right in the middle of the month, when our contango stopped going down and started moving in favor of backwardation. Now, this chart is a little bit scrunched up, but remember, where did we move from contango to backwardation? Well, that was the end of September, and there it is right there. Right again, the the future trading guide at this point is still telling you that it's giving you a buy signal. And then, where did we get that last big leg? Well, there is that April first, right? Right in that time frame where our contango, excuse me, our backwardation had narrowed and stopped, found support, and started uh, to rise. Now, in recent weeks. Uh, we have had a shift in the momentum of our market. Again, where did that shift come, our momentum, around May 12th? But we didn't get the sell signal for this last buy signal until just a couple of days ago, the 19th. If we go back to our contango backwardation chart, or our simple spread chart, as we call it, and we look at what has happened, let's say, in the last six months, right? Notice what had happened is that our backwardation was bumping up against supply. In other words, we have found people who are either be able to bring corn to the market or that we have had a change in the momentum of our demand. And if we look at where price fell to make a new backwardated high, it was right around February 20th. Where did it peak out? Excuse me, not February, May, May 11th, right in line uh, with our price action, okay? So what do we see now in corn? Well, I mean, uh, the market is still telling us we're in a backwardation, which tells us that we're still in imbalance in the market, which is favoring demand or limited supply. And it looks like we have just recently held some recent support but, you know, it does look like the market is making a momentum change. There's kind of a momentum change here. Now, I think what we can talk about in this one here is if I go, whoops, wrong chart. Let's go back to um, my corn chart. And I want to look at a much higher time frame. What I think we're seeing here in corn is a seasonal aspect. And what I wanna point out here is that, let's look at these peaks where we see the red candles, okay? And as I go on my cursor here, I want you to pay a particular attention to right up here in the left-hand corner. The light gray will represent the time of the year or the month that that chart is showing. And then this one, that darker one, the ones in bold, will represent the futures contract, which was the front month at that time. So, I mean, here is a big red candle, and you can see that that was in July, and we were trading the December contract. We go back over here, right, May, uh, the December contract. Here we have uh, March, the May contract. Here we have... June, the July contract. It's September, the December contract. Here is uh, August, the December contract. Here is uh, May, uh, the, Dece the July contract, right? July, June, right? July, June. So what we're seeing here is a seasonal aspect to grain markets. And one of the things we talk about in grains is old crop, new crop. And we're, March and July contracts represent 
the crop that was grown last year, old crop, and now the market is anticipating um, the new crop, right? The crop that's going to be harvested in September and uh, in December. And so usually what we see at this time of year is that grain prices do fall as we start to take in uh, information based on yields and plantings and how the corn is doing, you know, knee high by the 4th of July, all those things. So I think what we're seeing here in corn right now is that we have a seasonal play that's going on, which is pushing prices of corn lower. If we look at the December contract, you can see that um, on a shorter term basis, we have already started to see that seasonal play. So I think what we need to be aware of in corn is will the July continue to hold that backwardation right around, I think it was right around a dollar. And if it does, then that could set up for another rally as we come into later at the part of this year. But again, what could be that wild card? Well, of course, it's our old friend, the dollar, okay? All right, so that's corn. Um, let's go to metals, all right? Now, there is a nuance to metals, and it's particularly gold, in that some markets, and, and gold in particular, are inherently contangled. And now, what that means is that because the way um, how we store or how we inventory gold, gold reserves, there's something called cost to carry, and that's the costs that are so associated with holding reserves of gold. And it is for all precious metals, silver to lesser extent. So the storage fees, insurance, right? But also that cost of money, insur uh, interest rates, short-term interest rates. So what we typically see in gold is that our backwardation contango environment is not always like we see in the crude oil or in the grain example that I gave you, because they are always in contango. And this is really about traders who are looking at, um, well, let me show you the chart first. So here is our spread. This is June to August, right, a bi-monthly. And let me go to a little bit larger time frame. This is two years. And you can see there's our zero line, that blue line. And you can see that our price action or our contango is throughout the whole time of these two contracts, right? Because of that cost to carry, that rate of inflation all right all right so well typically what happens is we get a contra reaction to our contango as prices go up or go down so when gold prices go up right what does that mean well people will buy gold market but it also makes the farther contracts worth more money right because they're buying gold for that inflationary hedge Right? Well, inflation means that things are going to cost more in the future. So you typically see is that the contangle will actually widen in an uptrend for gold and actually will narrow in a downtrend right? as they discount or put premium to the forward contract. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a comparison, but I'm not going to use the dollar index. I'm just going to use the June contract, right, which is part of our chart here. And you can see that contraction, right? You can see here as the June gold price rallied, what happened to our contango? It widened. And as June prices fell, what happened to our contango? It narrowed, right? So what are we seeing now? Well, we're seeing gold prices rally and we see our contango narrowing, right? Because of the fear of inflation, the cost that gold futures contracts in the future are going to be more expensive because of that inflationary aspect. Now, that's gold and silver to a certain extent is both precious metal and it's also an industrial. So silver can have 
switch back and forth. But copper is an industrial metal, right? And it's more subject to the laws of supply and demand. So tangle and backwardation can play out in copper a little bit better than we see here in our example of gold. All right, so let me go back to our metals page. And um, here is our copper. And you can see that right now our prices are relatively close to each other, but um, we are in a slight contango, okay, a slight contango, all right? So here's our copper spread, and this is the July contract versus the September contract. And again, I'm gonna look at a little bit higher time frame. And again, I've highlighted a couple inflection points for you. Let's do a one year, let's do this, all right? And you can see that we typically do stay in sort of a contangle environment, but we did see in copper, uh, we moved from contangle to backwardation. That's a sign of a strengthening trend or an uptrend, a bull market. And you do see that, you know, several times we've kind of held this contangle value. And this is really the last time we went down before price of our spread went up, right? And that was around November 9th. Uh, where did it kind of peak out or where did the momentum change? Uh, on February 18th. And then where did our market go from backward dated to contango, right into about where our hysterical level was, find support, and then go back into backwardation right around April 14th. If I go to my futures trading guide, again, let me remind myself of those dates, November, February, and April, right? Here we got a buy signal from the futures trading guide right around the same time where our contango stopped going down and we moved towards backwardation. Okay, we're updating. Right. What was the other date? The February, right? I think that was this peak, right? That was that peak right in there. And then where did we get this last new leg? Right, right around April. So again, here we can use the futures trading guide as it relates to our backwardation contango to see if we believe in this trend or this gives us permission to follow what the guide is saying. Now, in the short term, right, we could see that we have just recently gotten a sell signal. Again, that sell signal could have been an indication to get out of this change, this long term, longer term trend, or it could also be the indication of a beginning of a new sell cycle. And what we're seeing now is that copper is returning to what we would consider more of a normal contango, maybe even a little bit deeper contango that we've seen in the past. So that could be a sign that the imbalance in copper is now starting to shift towards supply or lesser demand. Now, I think what is happening in copper in recent months is that we have a little bit of excessive speculation in um, copper prices, right? I'm sure a lot of you have been watching it in the news. And so what I wanna show you here is these two lines, this green line and this red line represent higher time frame trends. And I think what we're seeing right now in copper is that we have gotten a little bit ahead of ourselves in terms of our trends and that maybe the market is due for a slight correction again uh, that's what the contango is kind of telling us right but what i did want to show you is in terms of a longer term trend is that this rally here uh, is very similar to the last big mega cycles that we saw in copper. And all I really did here with this line right here is I just took this line right here, this last leg that happened during our 2008, 2011. I just drew a line, copied it, and just applied it to my copper. And 
what this is saying is if this trend is in control, this longer term trend is in control, that it looks like by June of next year, we will peak out in copper prices and that somewhere is around, you know, 5.3 or so or a little bit higher. So I still think that copper prices are going to go up in the long run, but in the short run, I think we've probably gotten a little bit ahead of ourselves. Market is due for a slight correction. But again, what is the caveat, right? What is the wild card? Well, it's our old friend, the dollar, right? And what we're seeing here in the dollar is we are at a very critical level in the dollar. So I think for a lot of our markets that might be in what we call transitory, which is Fed, uh, uh, Fed Chairman Powell is kind of saying is, I don't know if he's hinting to us that he believes that the dollar is going to strengthen over the next six months, but certainly for commodities, if the dollar does break this 89 level, which we just recently tested a few days ago and have now backed off of that, if it does break that, you do see that we have a lot of room for the dollar to fall. And I think that next leg up for a lot of these commodities in this super cycle will need a falling dollar to help them push prices higher. But again, if we have any kind of disruption in uh, supply or demand, then all bets are off. And again, you can watch your contangles and your backwardations. Okay. All right. So I want to get to your questions here. So let me ask answer a couple of these questions. So Gene, is there any one or a couple that are popping up that are no, we, in, I would we say had a common? few people wanting you to look at the metals and you just did. So that's wonderful. Oh, cool. Um, okay, let's see. So Aaron asks, how does Contango back grenade inform traders about futures price movements moving? Well, Aaron, again, use this idea of Contango and back gradation as a trend identifying, a trend enhancing, or remember, uh, it's just telling us that there's some kind of imbalance in that old economics of supply and demand. Um, Ed said, thanks for the, uh, explanations, the best he's ever heard. Thanks, Ed. I appreciate the feedback. Um, so Marcus, uh, asked, is this available for stocks? No, Marcus, because a stock is a stock, right? There's not multiple, we don't trade June IBMs and December IBMs, do we? No, we just trade the stock, okay? Um, and there are uh, other futures markets, what we call financial futures markets. Let's say for in indexes, interest rates, and um, currencies. And those ones, you know, the backwardation can tangle, there's a lot of nuances to them. Each one of them is a little bit different. Um, but there is something called convergence where you will see the mo two months as you go from expiration to expiration, you'll see convergence in financials, right? You can kind of count on that. Where in physical markets like commodities, there's not always guarantee you're going to get that convergence. Um, so I got a question here about commitment traders in, in backwardation and um, contango. Yeah, that's a great point. If I see a market move from contango to backwardation and I see my commitment to traders, especially if it's my consumers, right? My demands or my takers, that's a real clue to me that's telling me that they're afraid the prices are gonna go higher, right? So watching the commitment of traders as it relates to um, rising open interest, rising volume, and uh, our backwardation or contango, yeah, they, they, all those things will start lining up. When you see them all line up in that one direction, boy, those are really great opportunities. For instance, that crude oil, when we went from contango to backwardation, we saw a big jump in volume, big jump in open interest, and not only open interest in the front month contract, but open interest throughout all the months. Matter of fact, there was a, a much larger increase of open interest um, 
in the forward contracts because traders were anticipating right the uh, reopening of the markets the greater demand for crude oil right and uh, this imbalance that we were about to see okay uh, a couple more thank yous i see one from richard one of my regulars hey richard how's it going um All right, um, and Robert asks about bonds. No, I'm not gonna do bonds. We're just kind of concentrating on commodities today, okay? All right, cool. Well, Gene, I told you we we're gonna go to an hour and look at that, we're right on schedule, right? Right so. on the hour. <laughs> Sometimes I surprise myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's have a couple take takeaways here. All right, first, Right, high school, back in high school, price is just the result of supply and demand, right? That's all it is. And that when price moves, trends, that's telling you there's an imbalance between supply and demand. Now that imbalance could be order flow, it could be some kind of technical indicator, or it could be what we just discovered here is this relationship between real supply and demand, our producers, our makers and takers, and price action. So in the battle of price, technicals can win daily battles. So in other words, moving averages, RSI, stochastics, MACDs, momentum indicators, whatever, they can win the battle of price on a day basis but in the long run fundamentals always win the war they don't happen instantaneously but over the long run if the market is out of balance those price trends will continue until the market comes back into balance and in the long run the dollar has an inverse effect on commodity prices and just to remind you backwardation is an indication of greater demand or lesser supply or it could be both and those are typically found in uptrending markets contango is an indication of greater supply or lesser demand and again in a generalization those are consistently found in downtrending markets, unless that market is inherently contangled as we showed in the example with gold. Now, some markets, for instance, like natural gas, uh, if you look at the natural gas price curve throughout the year, it moves from contangled to backwardation. So, and that goes back to supply and demand, right? So if you look at crude, uh, natural gas prices, for instance, the January and February and March contracts, they will be more or at a premium or backward dated to let's say uh, April, May and June. But as you go through the summer, you might actually see summer prices discounted, right? Because we don't really use a lot of natural gas to heat our homes, but we do use natural gas for our electric. And that is a mega trend that is happening, changing in natural gas. So if you see summer months move to backwardation, so in other words, if you see June or July or August start trading at a premium to the sister month, let's say June to July or July to August, that could be a sign of a tightening market, which would mean that as we move into the winter months, that could carry on, that trend could carry on. And hint, 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 we're kind of seeing that developing in the natural gas market. I'm not saying that natural gas prices are going to have a big explosion like we've seen a lot of our other commodities, but if you look at in terms of relationship of all commodities, natural gas has been one of the ones that has underperformed over the last year. And so there might be some dynamics that are starting to play out in the future that could be positive uh, for natural gas. Okay, cool, where are we at? right at the top of the hour right cool excellent um all right so i just want to remind you all that uh you have an opportunity to try out some of these premium features for for instance the uh, futures trading guide is something that you have access to right gene but 
any below the front page, the details and uh, the backward history of all these trades, that is a premium feature, is that correct? That's correct. And for bar chart premium, as John's showing you on his screen, we do offer a free 30-day trial. So if you haven't tried bar chart Premier, or if you've tried it in the past and you want to take another look again, um, you can do so for free. John, are you going to talk about next week's session? Sure, why not? Let's see, what is next week's session? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's amazing? It doesn't it seem like how fast our weeks are going, right? Gee, I don't know. It just seems uh, like that. It is. We're halfway done with the year already. I, it's amazing, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah. I, oh, there, yeah. That, now I remember. Long strata. So we're just continuing our a, a series of um, option strategies, and we're going to go to the long strata. And the long strata is really designed to capture uh, growing or increase or high volatility, where we move from a low volatility market to a high volatility market. And we'll look at um, the screener and look at how the page is put together and we'll try to give you guys some ideas find candidates that are the costs let's say are cheap where we are moving from a low volatility environment to a high volatility environment so um, until then well Gene I want to thank you again for a great session and I want to wish everybody the best of health and the good of all trading Thank you, everybody. Uh, we appreciate you coming to barchart.com, and we hope to see you again at another session. Have a great week. Bye.